Greetings, friend. I will show you how Mark Gallip solved this hard Sudoku using a strategy so rare he didn't even know the name of it. I'll tell you what it is, plus give you pause the video moments so you can try to solve the trickier steps of the puzzle along with Mark. Click below if you want to give this puzzle a go. And with that, it's solving time. The key to this puzzle is figuring out what is the value of this green cell. And I'll show you how to get to that point. The first thing that Mark found is he looked at these threes right here and this three he's able to do a little cross hatching solve for three in a row two column nine and then using these eights and this eight there's only one place for an eight in block nine and quickly saw that with these sevens and these sevens he could solve for a seven there as well and then he marked a couple of spots for a three in block eight all right, so you notice you got these two threes here and this three. So what he did is called Snyder Notation. Anytime in a three by three block, you have two possibilities for a candidate, you mark them. And in case you solve one of these cells, you can call it, you solve one of the cells, you can solve the other one right away for that candidate. And he actually does that pretty quickly because he notices you get right here with these two threes and this three, there's only one place for a three and block Seven. So he saw that three displacing the Snyder mark and solving for a three here in block eight. Welcome to Smart Hobbies. If you're new, subscribe and tap the bell for notifications if you want to turn your passing interest in Sudoku into a fun and enjoyable hobby. After this, more cross hatching, looking at these twos, you solve for a two in block seven. And then he comes up here, and this is kind of one of the critical spots of the puzzle that Travis put into this. You have this two and you have this eight right here, which squeezes the two and eight to these two spots. And that's what Mark finds. And so that's a two eight hidden pair. And what it means by hidden pair is that you think there could be other candidates that could be in these cells. But since the two and eight are limited to those two cells, they block out all the other possibilities. So that's a two eight hidden pair, which means these two cells have to be a one nine naked pair. Naked pair being that the only these two cells only have two possibilities, a one and a nine. I cover hidden and naked pairs in my free Sudoku solving guide. Click on the pinned comment below to download it today. And now we can take that out a little bit further. And this is kind of a cool part of the puzzle. These two cells are now a naked pair of a four and a six. And then these two cells are a one and a nine naked pair. And this is important because now we're gonna figure out, is this a one or is this a nine? And it's going, we got to kind of work our way to that and figure out some more logic. All right, so now we do some more Snyder marks. Mark did twos in block three, and then he did a two eight hidden pair down here in block eight, because you have the eight and two here, and you have the eight and two here. Give me a thumbs up if you spotted this hidden pair while solving. Okay, more Snyder marks in block eight, two spots for four. And then in block three, two spots for a five because you have these two fives here. And now he's going and starting to look for bi-value cells, BVCs I call them, and he even marks a naked triple. So Mark anticipated it to be a tough puzzle. And when you can do that, you have two possibilities here. You know, you can continue with the Snyder marking or you can start marking individual cells of interest that have restrictions like bi-value cells. So he does a one six right here. And then he looks in column nine and goes, okay, I got a naked triple, two, four, six. So you have a two, four here, a two, six here, and a two, four, six right there. After this naked triple, he goes back to Snyder marks. He does some sevens in block four and sevens in block one and sevens in block two. And then he notices a naked triple down here because you have three possibilities left in block nine. And so he marks this four, six, nine, naked, triple. And this brings us up to our first pause the video moment. At this point, Marker Lift finds the last remaining three in the puzzle. So pause the video and see if you can find where the last remaining three is. Well, I'll give you a few seconds. Congratulations if you spot it. You're very good at cross hatching. For those of you who just want to enjoy the show, the three is in block six right there because of these two threes and these two threes. So Mark's able to spot that. And notice this, this is a two, four, six naked triple, even though there's only two candidates in each of those, the two, four, six are limited to these three cells. So he's able to mark a one, nine naked pair to finish block six. And from there, he goes over and looks for more restrictions here, four and a six, 
in row seven, column one. And then he does some smile marks of ones in block seven and fives in block seven. And then comes up and notices up column seven. This is kind of interesting. You got a four, nine, one, nine, four, six, one, six. That is a naked quad. Those four candidates, one, four, six, and nine are those four cells. And he's like, well, okay, there's one candidate still missing from column seven. It's a two. And that's what he has marked in the Snyder mark. So he's able to solve that cell for a two. Then he does some more Snyder marks in block two. And then he removes the two from row three, column nine. He's slowing down a little bit. And when you're doing this many marks, it's, as again, you can look for these cells or restriction like the one six and the four six, or you can start looking for single candidate strategies. Uh, I do advise that you kind of finish that Snyder marks and hopefully you can get rid of uh, some of these easier solves. So like that two right there, getting that a little sooner may have helped mark out. But after doing that, he does a four five down here in row nine and finishes up this naked triple with a four five six across row nine. Does some eights in block one and then nines in block one. And then he he's looking up here for more restrictions in block three. He says, okay, that's a four, five or six. And then he marks a one, four, five, six. When you're doing four candidates, that's probably not where you need to be looking right now. But he is able to remove sixes from these two cells. And so this leads us up to our next pause the video moment. Pause the video and see why we can remove the sixes from these two cells while well, I give you a few seconds. Okay, congratulations. If you saw this, you understand pointing pairs very well. For those of you who just want to enjoy the show, in this naked triple down here, the sixes are restricted to column eight. Mark it and mark these as Snyder notation, but the sixes have to be somewhere in block nine and are restricted to column eight. That means a six cannot be anywhere else along column eight. So they can no longer be in those two cells. Mark saw that and removed those sixes. And now we're getting to the main point of the puzzle. He looks here and tries to figure out what happens if this is a one or this is a nine. And he kind of goes into discussion about bifurcation, but he's like, if you could see, you know, the contradiction without going too far and just uh, marking things until you, you break the puzzle, he doesn't consider that bifurcation. And so what he does is he highlights all these cells yellow. And he says, if this is a one, he notices there's some restrictions here in column eight. And it has to do with this idea of conjugate pairs. Look in column eight and notice how many cells can contain a one. It's only these two cells right here. That's a conjugate pair. It means either this is a one, if it's not a one, the conjugate, this cell has to be a one. The nines are the same way. These two cells are a conjugate pair of nine, single candidate nines, because either this is a nine, if it's not a nine, this cell is a nine. And since the ones are conjugate here, the nines are here, this is forming this restriction. So he goes, if this is a one, that can't be a one making this a one, right? And if this is a one, that forces this to be a nine. And so if you have a nine here and a one here, you'd have nothing to put in this cell. And that would be a contradiction that would break the puzzle. And he says, I don't know what the name of this is, but it is good logic. And he's like, viewers, if you know what this is, Put it in the comments. Well, I, I put a comment in the video because I do know what strategy makes this all work and I'll show it to you right now. All right, let me color these up. This, you see how there's these two one nine by value cells, all right? So it's the same by value cell, one and a nine. And they gotta be connected by a conjugate pair of one of these canons. So if you look down in row seven, you'll see these two blue cells contain a nine. A nine cannot be anywhere else along row seven. It can't be here or here, can't be here, and because of this nine, it can't be here, even though it's not marked. So this is a nine, or, well, this cell. This cell could be a one. If it's not a one, it has to be a nine. This has to be a one. This would be a nine, and then this cell would have to be a one. So you have a one right here, or you have a one right there. Either way, one of these cells has to contain a one, which means you can remove a one from this cell right here and you force a one in this orange cell. This is called a W wing. Whenever you have a pair of bi-value 
uh, cells, and they're connected with a conjugate pair. That's a W wing. And what it means is you can eliminate the one from any cell that sees both of them. So for right there, which forces the one here, that's a nine, that's a one, and that's a nine. That is the strategy that Mark needed help with the name of. But we're not done yet because there's still plenty of solving to go on right here. So we'll remove these colors and notice that the green cell is a nine. After solving for a nine, he's able to solve for the one there in row seven. And then he looks up here and says, oh, I can displace the Snyder mark and solve for a nine in block one. All right, after doing that, he's able to displace the Snyder down here in block seven because of that one and solve for one. And then he displaced that Snyder five, he solves for five, and he puts a four, six, naked pair in block seven, which leads us to our next pause the video moment. Pause the video and now solve the rest of block nine, these three cells, while well, I give you a few seconds. Okay, congratulations if you solved it. You are an expert at pointing pairs and naked pairs because you know that a naked pair that's in the same row like these two also acts as a pointing pair. So a four and six cannot be anywhere else along row seven. So you can eliminate a four and six from these two cells and solve it for a nine, solve this for a four, solve this for a six. This is what Mark Goodliff spotted. And so I'm gonna remove, uh, he also solved for the four here, remove the Snyder mark and I'll remove the orange cells. If you found value in the strategies I'm showing you in this video, please consider buying me a coffee or just click on the super thanks here in YouTube. I'd really appreciate it. Next thing I'm going to do is put this five, nine naked pair in block eight. And then Mark went up here and notice because it's four, he can start doing some solving up here. He can solve that cell for a six and a one. And then he can solve for a one here and finish up block six with a two, four and a nine. After doing all that, he's able to solve uh, for the six there in block three, it removes the one, keep a four, a four or five naked pair in block three. And then he says, where can we go from here? Seeing this two, he's able to disambiguate the two eight in block five. And then he does this really cool, what I call the neat naked triple trick to finish row four. You have three cannons remaining here in row four, right? We already have a one, two, three, four, five, and eight. We need a six, seven, and a nine. Whenever you have two or three candidates, so in this case, a seven and a nine in one column, and then one of those is repeated, the nine's repeated in another column, you can solve all three cells. Because you know the seven nine means that this cell has to be the six, the nine's gotta be the only spot it can't be, which is right here, and leaves the seven for the third spot. That's my neat naked triple trick. And Mark used that to solve those three cells. Then he went down here and he was able to solve for the four, in block four. After that, he noticed with these two ones, he can solve for a one in block four, and he marked that five, eight naked pair. Okay, and then he came up and he marked the five, eight because of column three, there's only two possibilities remaining. And then he finds a naked single in block one. So this is our next pause the video moment. Pause the video, see if you can find the naked single in block one that Mark did, well, I'll give you a few seconds. Okay, congratulations if you found it. You're really good at finding these naked singles. You look for the grayest restriction, which is column two, and say, okay, I got a one, two, three, five, eight, and nine. I'm missing a four, six, seven. You come over here and notice the six and seven are in row three. That means this cell is a naked single four. You can find and solve single cells faster with this tutorial. After solving that four, you're able to disambiguate the four or five over here is what Mark did. And then he's able to solve for the eight right here because he's just missing a one, two, and eight along row three. But I got a one and two there. So he goes, that has to be the eight, allowing him to solve for that five. And he puts a one, two across row three. Then he comes down or actually back over here to block one and says, oh, I got the seven right there. So that means that's got to be a six. That's got to be the seven to finish block one. And then he works his way down here and disambiguates these pairs, the five, eight and the five, and the four and the six. 
Works his way back up here because I have the seven there. I can displace one of those Snyder marked and solve for the seven and finish row two with a five. And then he says, okay, what I got next? I'm missing a six and an eight there. He sees a six there. So there's the eight and there's a six. Now he's working his way down columns four and six. So he gets the eight and the two there. And then he solves the one, the two there. Then he solves the one, the nine and block five and finishes up with the five and the nine in block eight. Watch this next video to see how Kraken the Cryptic tackled another tricky Sudoku. Thank you so much for watching.